you know, if you're going to have a political system at all, you need to be able to have some sort of creative thinking in there and not have rules that are going to curtail that. You know, when people come up with ideas that are going to benefit humanity, they need to be able to have the means to implement those ideas. It should not always be about the corporate system. And that's the problem, folks. You know, I've gone through that so many times, people's willingness to support the corporate system and the need to balance the books all the time. You know, it's all about the economic model rather than about humanity and the human race. You know, so we've got to find a way through that. We've got to start readjusting people's perspectives in any way that we can and put humanity back into the equation, put humanity back at the top of the food chain. You know, this is what I've been attempting to, to do when I keep mentioning Palestine and Gaza and all this sort of stuff in the legal key. And I know people are sick of hearing me talk about it. People say, why do I keep mentioning this problem and not mentioning the solution to the problem? But they don't see what I'm saying. The situation in Gaza is the solution to the problem. You know, and I'm not expecting to have any type of legal remedy with this approach. You've got to understand that. It's simply a way of demonstrating to the people around you that the legal system is not being applied evenly and a way of putting these politicians on the spot. And I've had people ask me how they can do it in their own country. Well, look, what you need to do, folks, is find what legislation exists in your country which prevents people from supporting or funding war crimes. You'll find that there's legislation in your country which says that you cannot contribute to a known terrorist organization or you cannot contribute to someone who is knowingly carrying out war crimes or human rights abuses. There'll be something there. It's there in every country, folks. So there'll be something in your country that deals with this. You need to find that piece of legislation. And then when you're dealing with a local council issue, something that is affecting you on a personal level in your community, Go to a council meeting because very often they have community meetings where you can all go and you can discuss a certain new rezoning of the area or new fluoride that's coming into the water or whatever. There's all sorts of issues that you want to go and discuss with people and there's all sorts of opportunities to do that. So you take one of these opportunities and you go there and you're dealing with this legislation that they're trying to bring in. And then you simply ask the question, well, excuse me, but how is this legislation valid when it can be proven that it's being enacted by a person who's supporting international war crimes and you can bring up the legislation that you've found which prevents people from funding war crimes in your area, you can bring it to their attention and then you can show them a copy of Article 33 of the Fourth Geneva Convention which demonstrates that Israel is currently carrying out war crimes and especially if you're in the United States, the politician that you're dealing with has very likely signed the APAC pledge. So you can simply ask the question, can you please show me how your legislation is valid when it would appear that you are in breach of this country's laws by your support of international war crimes, can you please show cause why we shouldn't pursue this avenue to determine the validity of your legislation? Because in order for us to deal with this legislation, we need to know that the legislation was enacted by a responsible person that is not abusing the office that they hold in doing so. And Due to your support of international war crimes, it would appear that you are in abuse of office. Can you please show cause why we should not pursue that avenue and have you prosecuted for abuse of office and have this legislation overturned in the process? And you're going to find that the politicians really don't know what to say when you ask them that question. You've put them on the spot. And not only that, you've planted a seed in the minds of the community. And they're going to start thinking about this. Well, hang on a minute. How can this guy be affecting my life in such a negative way if it can be shown that he is in support of international war crimes and in abuse of his office and in breach of this country's constitution and every other law we can think of? I mean, how is anything this guy doing, how is it valid? You know, it's just putting that seed in people's minds, folks. This is what I've been saying, how this provides a legal key. It isn't that I expect to find any remedy in doing this. I don't expect to be able to take these people to court and prosecute them. But what I'm saying is that they are all worthy of prosecution, and if the law were to be applied evenly, then they could be arrested and taken and prosecuted right now. The fact that that doesn't happen should demonstrate to people that the law is not being applied evenly, and in fact that the legislation they are attempting to inflict upon you is invalid because it has been enacted by a person who is not actually worthy of holding the office that he holds because he is in breach of law himself, not only of the law of your country, but also of international laws. And this is a huge awakening for people, folks, when they can see this. They can see the criminal nature of the people who are running this system.
And like I said, I don't expect to find remedy there, but it's a key that can be used to demonstrate to people just how much they're being played. And I hope I explained it well enough then for people to be able to understand the concept and understand what I'm getting at by using this approach. And folks, I've tried this with local politicians, and you should see how quickly they leave the room when you ask a question like this. They literally get up and they walk out and they simply say the discussion is over. And it really embarrasses them if you can do it in front of enough people because the people see this reaction and they start to question why the politician didn't simply answer the question and sort of laugh you out of the room and tell you to go and learn the law or something if you were so wrong. But they don't do that, folks. They back away. They say this is a different topic, that I'm stirring up trouble, that I'm trying to shift the discussion, all sorts of things, folks. But they get very embarrassed and they leave the room very, very quickly. And that's a very empowering thing to have happen in front of your local community because it wakes a lot of people up. And that's a good thing. That's a really good thing, folks. And anything we can use to wake people up really is a good thing because the people have to see how they're being played. And just seeing a politician run from the room like this is very empowering for people. They suddenly realize that they're not just a little person. They can actually make a difference if they ask the right questions.